We're going to clean this 50 year old clock loop. I put a very small amount of synthetic lubricant on it and that did help, but it's going to need to be cleaned. I've got a rod running through it, suspended over a spackle bucket. I don't want to submerse the mainspring here. There was a technique for cleaning the old Timex watches where you would use lighter fluid. Mineral spirits and lighter fluid are very similar. I'll put the mineral spirits in this bottle and spray, we'll spray the movement and clean off all that old oil. I'll keep everything moving while I spray it down. I use a dental brush to get everything cleaned up. I want to get everything clean, but I don't want to submerge the mainspring. You can see a lot of dirt that we're getting out of there. With that cleaning, it's running a lot stronger. Spraying it down made a lot of improvements, but I decided to go ahead and submerge everything. My concern is I don't want the mainspring to corrode. The paint thinner is not going to cause corrosion. I'll continue to soak and scrub everything. You can see a lot more debris on the thinner. I'll let it soak a bit longer. The mainspring is not broken because if I take the key and wind it up, it's at the top, which is not a good thing. If the spring were broken, it would just continue to move all the way around and around and around. There's a lot of tension on the mainspring, so I'll let it down. To gain better access, we'll pull out these four pins that hold the movement on. Now the top will pull off. I'll wear a glove for this because there's a lot of tension in here and I don't want it to spin past on my fingers. Right here is what they call the click and this is the click spring. When you release this click, it's going to unwind the spring. When I put the key on, you can see as I move the key, the click kind of releases a little bit. With my hand on the key, I'll be able to release the click and slowly unwind it. I'll put my hand on the key, release a little bit of the tension, and with my finger, push the clip back, and then slowly wind it back. You can see that I wound everything back about five clips. We'll do the same procedure. I'll pull the tension off of the click, and just keep unwinding it like that. You don't want to unwind everything too fast. You want everything under control. I'll just take my time and unwind it all. Whoops. I'll take my time and unwind it very carefully. There's absolutely a lot of tension on this thing. Just take it nice and slow. Now we can feel that all the tension is completely off. If I remove the click back, the key does not move. If I want to put a little tension on it, you can see as I click it, the click will allow each movement and it'll stop it on the way back. I'll go ahead and continue soaking the movement. With everything clean, it's working quite well. It's always fun to see something work again. Because we remove the oil, we'll need to put oil back on the clock. We'll put the oil anywhere it pivots in very small amounts. Use paper to wipe off any extra. Any excess oil will just collect dust. If the movement collects dust, it'll just stop the clock. A lot of dirt and debris came off of the movement when we cleaned it. I'll put the minute hand on to see how long it it's goes. It's been about 10 minutes and the escapement wheel just stopped moving. There's big improvements and we know it works, but we'll go ahead and soak it a little longer. We'll emulate an ultrasonic machine by turning this machine on. We'll pull everything apart a little bit more so we can get it clean. We'll also inspect for unnecessary wear. As we wipe everything down, you can see there's dirt in there. Quite a bit of dirt when you pull it apart. Pull out the barrel with the mainspring. I was hoping just soaking it would get it cleaner, but you can see there's a lot of dirt in there. We'll pull apart the escapement mechanism, this mantlet, so we can get it all clean. Yeah, you can see it's pretty dirty. While it's opened up, we'll add a little bit of oil. As small a drop as you can get right on the ends where they move. Pull off any extra. We'll place the top back on. We'll need to make sure that every post lines up. I added another bar here to kind of stabilize everything to make sure everything's level. It's running really good. It's been going for about 20 minutes now. Here's a view from the top so you can see the escapement wheel. Now that the clock is running consistent, we can go ahead and put it back together. We'll put the plate on that connects to the dial. Place the dial on. Attach the dial. Put on the hour hand, the minute hand, add the dust cover. We'll insert the clock into the case, tighten everything up, set the pendulum on, place it on the wall and make sure everything's balanced. The key will wind it up, of course not too tight. Give the pendulum a little push. So nice to hear it ticking again. Close it up and enjoy the time.